Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the intro, the thumbnail and the title, this is what we are going over here today. This is the new Anderson production Kyger 9C. Now, what is it right up front? It is a Glock 19 clone, Gen 3 Glock 19 clone. Uh, there are some differences though, for sure. We will definitely get into those and all the different details of it, what I think of it, all of those sorts of things. But before we do that, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is USCCA. Uh, for those who don't know, the United States Concealed Carry Association offers a number of different products, including self-defense insurance. So should you find yourself in a lawful shoot, they will be there for you uh, in your moment of need. Additionally, they offer lots of training. I recently went through some of their training. It is legit it's good to go and other online courseware for their members so definitely thank you to them for sponsoring the video now let's walk through this pistol step by step and with that we will start out here at the bottom and sort of work our way up and forward for some semblance of order it does ship out with a Magpul PMAG. It is a standard capacity Glock 19 compatible PMAG. And of course, as you guys have probably seen throughout the video already, it does work with any of your Glock mags, including the fun sticks, uh, should you choose to use them. Down here at the bottom, we do have some beveling on that magwell, which does help for reloads. Additionally, it helps for stripping and ripping the magazine. It has that little cutout there on the sides. Should you get a double feed and have to pull it out, you get some leverage on it for sure. I do dig that. Continuing on with the magwell, looking in there, it has something that I haven't seen on any of the other clones. It has these little sand cuts in the magazine well, so that way if you get any kind of grime, debris, dirt, things like that in there, you're able to still use your magazine, insert it, and just kind of bypass that. If you guys have seen some of the AR-15 bolt carrier groups that have a similar concept, it's basically the exact same concept, just applied to a, to a magazine well, rather. Um, additionally, we do have a lanyard loop on the rear. For those of you guys who are like Army Second Lieutenants and you have to like use lanyards for your pistols, uh, rejoice. This one here is good to go for that purpose. Uh, additionally, the grip angle is different than a Glock. So a lot of folks with your standard Glock grip angle will present high when they present a pistol. So they'll come out like this, do the grip angle on the Glock, and that sort of is a pro and con thing. Some folks love it, some folks hate it, is what it is. This one is a little bit more vertical in that regard, so you're less likely to have that issue if you do have it with Glocks. Um, the texture on this is fantastic. I'm probably gonna hit on this again as we go along in the video, but honestly, the texture on this, uh, pistol itself is pretty much ideal in my opinion. Uh, on the sides there, it's pretty grippy. And then on the front and back, while it doesn't look particularly grippy, uh, it is. Um, it absolutely sticks to your hand. It does not move on the recoil at all. Down here at the bottom, we have this little extended piece, which does two things. Number one, it allows you to get a ledge there for your pinky. I have large hands. I wear extra large gloves for reference point for those of you out there. And when you combine that with this high undercut there on the trigger guard, it just allows this pistol to stick to your hands. And in my opinion, the uh, texture on there is not too aggressive. Some folks may say it is for inside the waistband carry. Um, in my opinion, it's not, but I tend to err on the side of aggressiveness. That's my personal opinion. Your, yours may vary. Uh, one thing I will say though, is that the grip is not small. So those of you out there with really small hands, just to kind of let you guys see how it looks compared to the actual Glock 19, you guys can see there the actual 19 itself, the Gen 3, I can get a little, around it a little bit more than I can here with this one. Again, for me, I like that. I absolutely prefer it in every way. It just gives me more real estate to purchase when I'm grabbing the pistol, and I just think it's fantastic. <laughs> Continuing on up there, we do have our standard Gen 3 mag release. And additionally, another point that I should get into when talking about the grip is that this portion here really allows you to get that support hand in there. And if you're also firing one hand, it gives you another ledge right there to kind of get onto. Um, really, grip, they did this one right. Uh, continuing on up, 
our slide lever slide lock is flat, so it's not extended, which I prefer. Uh, again, for me, with that high two thumbs grip, um, for me, if anything's extended, I have a tendency to hit that, either causing a false slide lock or a lack of slide lock when the magazine is out. Never had that experience at all with this pistol, so I do like that. Additionally, it is shrouded by that aggressive grip texture, which allows you, if you're firing like that, you get a ledge on there, like some folks would use with a 1911 with a safety. It gives you that built right into the frame. I dig it. Uh, continuing on forward, we have this cutout here on both sides. It gives you an index point for both your trigger finger when you're not on the gun. And additionally, it gives you uh, a little bit of a ramp there to grip onto and really dig into it to control recoil with your opposite hand. Uh, again, regardless of if you're righty or lefty. Speaking of that, the magazine release is not ambidextrous nor reversible. It's a Gen 3 thing, uh, kind of is what it is. Moving on forward, you'll note that we do have two pins there up front and then one in the rear. Again, for those who are new here, that is the way that Glocks were for Generation 3 guns and any of your components, which this is key, um, and accessories that you want to use with a Glock, whether it be a trigger, uh, a different striker safety, whatever the case may be, will work in this pistol. So that definitely is a good feature. Uh, continuing on forward, we do have a double undercut, undercut rather if I could talk, trigger guard once again, allowing you to get nice and high up on the pistol, giving you a very good grip texture on there. Then it has this little ledge on the front, which I would never use. Um, but for those of you guys who shoot like that, which I know there's a lot of folks and Jerry Michalak is a world champion, he shoots like that. So certainly it works for some people, but if you shoot like that, it does give you an additional ledge to really bear down and control that pistol, keep it nice and flat. Continuing out front, we do have a 1913 rail. In my opinion, that is actually an improvement over a Glock. Uh, the Glock rail is fine. Uh, the reason it's fine is because it's so ubiquitous at this point that accessory companies have just added an additional rail to fit the Glock rail, but if it can fit on a 1913 rail, I would prefer that, a universal standard, if you will. Continuing on up to the slide, slide is made out of stainless steel, 416R. Additionally, the barrel is as well. It has a nitrided finish on there. You guys can see that on parts of this. You should see it with the photos that we're rolling in. We do have some wear points because I have been carrying this gun. And although the wear points do show on the finish, one benefit of nitride for folks, again, who are new here, is that it actually penetrates into the surface of the metal. So that way, even on the portions that are worn, it's still gonna give you that good corrosion resistance, surface hardness, all of those sorts of things that come with nitride from the factory it does ship with plastic sites that are absolute trash um, i've stayed consistent on that over the years with glock sites um, that said at the price point of this pistol i'm much more okay with this gun coming with plastic sites than i am with a 600 dollars glock coming with plastic sites however we did change them out we do have some excess sites on there and that of course is one of the additional benefits that you get with the gun and like i said any of your accessories for a glock 19 will fit on this pistol that includes sights so we put the excess sights on there and went to work and had absolutely no issues of any kind big fan of them for sure you can see there we do have some scalloping on the top of the slide which does lighten it up a little bit we'll roll in the actual specs of the pistol here size and weight and all that stuff so you guys can get an idea but pretty much Glock 19, pretty darn close. And uh, you guys will see there the forward serrations definitely do have some grippiness to it. Same is true on the rear. Um, there are more aggressive slide serrations out there, but I would say it's probably more aggressive than most. And in really normal field conditions, you'll have no issues operating them either from the front or from the rear. Um, takedown on the gun is standard Glock. So basically we are going to lock our slide to the rear, ensure that we are empty. Point in a safe direction, pull the trigger, and we'll get into trigger here in just a second. But we'll pull down on these two tabs there. And one thing I will say, first time I took it down, I scuffed up my nails because again, right there where those tabs are, it is very aggressive in terms of texture. So you're gonna wanna use the meat of your fingers rather than your nails. Trust me on that one, learn from me. Uh, again, standard a Glock spring on there. So it has a polymer rail with the standard Glock spring. Additionally, initially rather, I should say, I thought this was a factory Glock part, but it doesn't have the factory Glock part numbers on there. So leads me to think that Anderson is making these in-house. Speaking of making them in-house, good time to mention that many of you, I'm sure know Anderson for making AR-15s. They've been doing so under their logo and their brand for a long time. They also make a ton of other brands just under different uh, logos and different brands. And uh, really they have a ton of manufacturing experience. So unlike other companies that are kind of getting into it, they've been doing it for a long time, just applying it to pistols. So I do think that is an interesting point to make. Uh, barrel there is not 
polygonal or polygonal, depending on whom you ask. It's traditional rifling, so if you guys shoot with lead reloads, certainly could be a good thing for you. You can see there we have a nice wide feed lip on there, feed ramp rather, and I've had absolutely zero failures of any kind with hollow points, so good on them for that. You can see we have some good honest wear there on the barrel, but again, that's just because we've been shooting it and looking in our slide there, you'll see everything is standard Glock 19 Gen 3, nothing fancy, no machining marks, no chatter marks, nothing like that. Everything looks good and even. And one thing that is a little bit different than your standard Glock 19s is going to be all of the different components that interface with each other. So. A long time ago, probably six or seven years ago now at this point, I made a video on how to do the 25 cent trigger job on a Glock, where you basically polish all of the surfaces that come into contact with each other as you press the trigger. And it does improve the Glock trigger for sure. This one comes that way from the factory. Is it a huge difference? Absolutely not. Is it a slight improvement? Absolutely it is. And to return it, it's basically, or reassemble it rather, return it to uh, assembled. It's basically the exact same thing. One thing I will note is that we do have this little line there on the barrel wear mark. And from what I can tell, that's just because we have a little bit of a casting mark there on our uh, block. I'm not sure if you guys can see it on camera, but I will try to roll in photos for you guys. Is it an issue? No, not at all in my opinion, but just something in case folks are looking at the photos and asking why it's there. That is why I think it's there. Um, again, has caused no issues to date. And reassemble, basically exactly like your standard Glock. Nothing too fancy there in that regard. Trigger there has our trigger safety, which is this portion here. If you don't press that, if you just press outside, the trigger itself, of course, will not go off. We already talked about striker safety inside there. Additionally, it does have the loaded chamber indicator, just like your traditional Glock would. So if you have a round in the chamber, your extractor will be pushing out and giving you a tactile and visual, visual rather notification that the pistol is loaded. But of course, it is not loaded. Pressing the trigger, it's honestly, it's a Gen 3 Glock trigger with the 25 cent trigger job. That's what it is. It's not going to win any awards or anything like that, but it's absolutely not terrible. If you can't shoot it, it's because you're not a good shooter, in my opinion. It's not because the gun is bad. So we have our take up, then we have our wall and our brake. It's not the crispest. It's not bad. On my scale, it breaks right at four and a half pounds. On their website, it says five and a half pounds. But again, with my trigger gauge over and over, it says five and a half or four and a half rather pounds, not five and a half like they say. So a little bit lighter in that regard, likely due to the polishing, but very good audible reset. I'm not sure if my mic is picking it up, but absolutely cannot complain about that at all. With it back assembled and the trigger having gone over, what do I think of it versus a traditional oh. Glock 19 Gen 3? Well, a couple things come to mind. Uh, first off, as I'm looking at it right now, it has a recessed crown in there, which obviously our Gen 3 Glock does not have. That's a nice feature to have for sure. Um, if you do any sort of uh, dynamic shooting where you're actually bumping into things, hitting objects. If you do have any damage to the front of your pistol, it's not likely to affect accuracy. Whereas with the actual muzzle sticking out a little bit there, it might. Has it ever happened to me? Absolutely not, but it could happen. Uh, it certainly is possible. Compared to the Gen 3 Glock 19, I do think this has superior ergonomics. I don't even think it's close, honestly. And I'm somebody who literally grew up, you know, in my shooting career anyway, uh, shooting Glocks. So Glocks were the first guns I shot. They were the ones I you know, naturally went to for self-defense over the course of my life. And the gr Glock grip angle to me is not weird. It's not odd. I don't present high. But even with that, I absolutely think this has superior ergonomics. Um, these frames, from what I understand, are also available by themselves. But with that, um, like I said earlier, they nailed the ergonomics on this. I absolutely am not mad about it at all. One thing I wish they did, just for today's pistol consumer market, is put an optics cut on there. That said, these have just been out for a few weeks now. I'm guessing that's coming in the you know future generations and those sorts of things. But of course, on our Gen 3 Glock 19, that wasn't a feature there either. And you should note there, this is, again, a Glock that I carried for a long time. This is my second set of adhesive grips I've put on there because I wanted additional texturing. And uh, with this particular one, obviously the Kyger, you don't have to do that. Now let's talk about price and reliability, right? Because I'm sure that's what everybody wants to know. Reliability, so this gun right now has about 800 rounds through it and we had one malfunction. And at the time I actually thought it was something that it wasn't. I thought it was a light primer strike and it wasn't. It was a failure for the trigger to reset. Uh, I didn't realize that until I watched the video. Hopefully we're rolling that in here and you guys can get a look at it. Um, but the trigger didn't reset. That was in the second magazine through the gun. 
since then in using all different types of magazines and ammunition predominantly 115 grain 124 grain minute ammunition who they are our pistol sponsor here i uh, definitely appreciate their support for that uh, we've had no malfunctions outside of that i don't know if it was a breaking issue I, I have no idea i just know the trigger didn't reset once and after that it's been perfectly fine that said i also know multiple people that have these guns and they've all none of them have had any malfunctions so i'm just the unlucky one is what it is but reliability in that regard seems to be pretty darn good and like i said i was actually carrying this after putting some rounds through it so it definitely was reliable enough that i put it up to that standard so price point on this one right now not sure what the msrp is on it but looking around right before i came out to make this video i could find them under 400 dollars so as compared to Gen 3 Glock 19, you're looking at about 25% less in terms of cost. For holsters, it's obviously going to vary by holster manufacturer, what fits it and what doesn't. In my use, I didn't find one that didn't fit. That said, with this different rail out there, I'm sure there are some that don't. I tried three or four different holsters. They all fit it just fine. Um, but just know that going forward that one may not fit if it says it fits a Glock 19, but in my use, they all fit. So that's reliability that's price point um honestly like we said i do think the ergonomics are better of course it's not a glock it doesn't have the proven history but it does have the same operating system which absolutely has the proven history and uh, of course we're going to keep shooting it if anything changes down the road we will do an update video for you guys but so far so good for the kiger 9c um you know should you rush out and buy it it's up to you all i can do is present the information for you guys and then you guys can make the decision from there do your own research and obviously this is a sample size of one with that, I think that's all I have for you guys. If you have any questions or anything like that, you can post down below in the comments section as always. Um, you can also post over at my various social media sites that you see here on your screen. Uh, additionally, if you like this type of video and you're not subscribed, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you think you're subscribed, double check. YouTube has been unsubscribing folks. And if you've done both of those and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, make sure you sign up for the email at the website here on your screen. This email contains all of the uh, E videos rather since the previous month's email went out so that way there's no big tech giant censoring your eyes from my content and again it just goes out monthly so it's not spammy at all additionally should this thing go on sale should the sites go on sale should the ammo go on sale should anything related to guns and gear go on sale we will send it out in our daily deals email that you can sign up for here at the website here on your screen it contains six or seven of the best deals that we find around the internet and occasionally a meme as well and it if it's in the email it's the cheapest i know of anywhere on the internet so that way I've saved, I can save you guys rather some time because I've done the price comparison for you and hopefully save you some money as well. And I think that's all I have for you. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.